Hey guys, Brian here, coming at you today with another video review. Today we're going to be taking a look at Machine Wars Sandstorm. So here we are, and here he is. And as you can see, he is a helicopter, as is what you would usually get Sandstorm as. If not a triple changer. He is not a triple changer, he is a retool and redeco of the Generation 1 uh, Rotostorm, I believe it is, uh, figure. That came out in the early 90s. <clears throat> As you can see, he's got really nice painted like tiger stripe kind of paint going on. US Army logo there with, with a star. He is an MP. So I guess he's a cop in this one. And yeah, just turns into a helicopter. Articulation-wise, I'm not sure if it's supposed to do this, but... The landing gear goes in like that. Mine's a little floppy. I don't know if it's supposed to actually stick out like that. Or if it's supposed to just flop down. But that's mine. Um, you can spin his rotors around. Which is always fun. And there's a button right here. And if you push that, his missile will fall off. No, it's supposed to bring down both of these cannons. Um, it's never happened to me. Just having one fly off like that. Let's try that again. There we go. Those can come down for attack mode, I think it's called. Um, but yeah, it turns into a helicopter. It's pretty cool. Size comparison-wise, here he is with... Machine Wars Soundwave, and they're both, um, I think they're both the Mega Class. I always get the Ultra Class and the Mega Class confused with, with the Machine Wars ones, but these are the supposedly the same size. So, here's how they stack up. Um, Soundwave a lot shorter in vehicle mode. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And here he is with the bigger Optimus Prime, so you can see how they stack up. Again, Sandstorm is a lot longer than Optimus is, and taller just because of the missile um, pods and the rotors. Transformation got for this guy is really easy, he is a uh, just like uh, Optimus and Soundwave, a reused Generation 1 mold. So to transform him, what I typically do first is bring this part down and flip out his feet. You can fold the rotor together like that. And then you're going to split this tail section back here like so. Just bring those down. Sorry, my allergies are bothering me today. Then you're gonna extend the legs all the way to the back there. And then the landing gear can just fold onto the side. Like that. Then you're gonna flip down this nose cone area, make his chest, and reveal his head. Then you're gonna see right here, there's a port, and right there, there's a peg. Right there, there's a peg, and right there, there's a slot. Just gonna lock that in like that on both sides. Spring down the arms. On this side, mine doesn't really like to lock in, which is kind of unfortunate. But what are you gonna do? Then these parts will just fold back like that. And there you have Sandstorm in robot mode. And as far as accessories, he comes with the detachable rocket launchers. Which you can hold in his hands, if you wish. I usually just keep him on his back. But you can have him holding some cannons if you want. 
This doesn't really go anywhere. It just kind of just hangs out there. If you want, you can have it folded up like that. And then it's just kind of... You can see it over his head and everything, so... I like to just keep it kind of dangling down. You can't really see it with his legs in the way, but... He does not come with any missiles for his rocket launchers. Um, the original toy did. But I guess in the late, mid to late 90s, whatever, the projectiles didn't meet the U.S. safety standards. So you don't get any projectiles for them. This is how he comes. The entire firing mechanism inside there has been taken out. Which is kind of unfortunate, but what are you going to do? Articulation wise, he is a G1 mold, so there really isn't any. He can put his arms like that. Again, mine doesn't like to clip in right there that well. He can put his arm out like a 90 degree bend right there. He can put his legs forward like that and like that if you wanted. Um, Really no way to get him to stand. Well, I guess you can get him kind of in a partial walking pose like that, but I don't know why you want, you, why you want to. There is no waist articulation, no head articulation. You got a nice head sculpt though. I believe this is a new head for this figure. So there you go. Some nice light piping in there. But he's pretty cool. Anyway, size comparison wise, here you have him with his same size classmate, Soundwave. And as you can see, at the head, he's still taller. Um, not as bulky as Soundwave. Does have a little bit more of a backpack. A lot of Soundwave's plastic probably also went into his missile. So, you can see how they stacked up together. And next we have him with his leader, Optimus Prime. Again, the bigger size class. As said in the Optimus Prime review, that a lot of that is because they take his trailer into account for his size class. So, of the Machine Wars Autobots, Sandstorm is the biggest one. Other than that, there's really not much to him. He looks nice on the shelf. He's a lot of got a lot of character to him. Um, I'm not sure if this was a big issue with that figure or not, but it's a big issue of mine with these not really sticking in well. Um, but there he is. That is the video review for the Machine Wars Sandstorm.